This module will discuss some of the characteristics of cold pools, which thus far we have discussed in the context of downdrafts in mesoscale convective systems. Cold pools are one mechanism for forced low-level convergence that can support the vertical growth of convection in the tropics. Essentially, a cold pool is a density current, also called a gravity current. Dense, generally relatively cold air advances into warm air like a mesoscale front, forming a mesoscale high near the base of the jump up draft in an MCS and producing overturning flow and a mesoscale low near the head of the density current. A secondary pressure maximum occurs at the rear of the cold pool head. Cold pools also frequently occur outside of MCSs. They can form as low theta E air accompanying downdrafts and isolated convection propagate outward within the boundary layer from where the downdraft encounters the surface. Convergence at the leading edge, or nose, of the cold pool forces upward motion, here, which, if strong enough, can reach the LCL and form an arc cloud, and, it's, and possibly uh, even deeper cumulonimbus clouds. The advance of gravity currents is driven by the pressure gradient force. Given a simple two-dimensional cross-section in the x and z directions only, and assuming a steady state, we can determine the propagation speed by starting with the horizontal momentum equation. Given some depth of the cold pool, we'll call it little h, and a density that is larger than environmental density by delta rho, the forward propagation speed of the gravity current is related to the phase speed of a gravity wave modified by the density difference. The difference in density across the boundary of the cold pool is controlled by both temperature and moisture, and so we consider the difference in theta e between the cold pool and its environment. A large difference in density or a cold or relatively dry current will propagate more quickly into the environmental air. Gravity currents also propagate more quickly as they grow deeper. We can also manipulate the horizontal momentum equation to show that the following, that following the trajectory of a parcel in the cold pool, the sum of the kinetic energy associated with motion and enthalpy are conserved. If we integrate along x, this equation, to some distance well ahead of the cold pool where the ambient flow is toward the cold pool at velocity capital U, and, and from a point immediately ahead of the gust front, we find that the pressure perturbation results from conversion of kinetic energy to enthalpy. Thus, the pressure perturbation at the leading edge of the cold pool is not hydrostatically driven. Furthermore, the meso-low at the top of the head is also non-hydrostatic, and while not shown here, is related to rotation at the top of the cold pool head. The meso-high at the rear of the head is hydrostatically induced, meaning that it is related to the column integrated mass at that location and above. We can also, from the 3D momentum equation with analastic assumptions, divide the pressure perturbation into its hydrostatic contribution, the buoyancy pressure perturbation, and a dynamic pressure perturbation. The total pressure perturbation is the sum of the two and is seen in the plot at the top. It is dominated by the buoyant pressure perturbation in the rear of the gust front. However, right at and just in front of the gust front, the dynamic pressure perturbation dominates, as discussed on the previous slide. Numerous cold pools can coexist in the same environment, and their collision enhances convergence and promotes deep convection. On the left is an example of a rainfall-induced cold pool. Low theta E air descends and spreads out through the boundary layer. Shallow convection forms at the edge of the cold pool, where high theta E environmental air is forced over the head of the advancing gravity currents. The image at right illustrates two intersecting cold pools. Shallow convection will form where a cold pool expands outward, like in the left panel, but convergence is enhanced where the two cold pools intersect. Convection is preferentially forced in locations where more low-level convergence occurs, and as the convection intensifies, inflow of high environmental theta E air further fuels the updrafts, cutting off the moist static energy from the shallow convection elsewhere along the cold pool boundaries. 
The typical updraft velocities along simulated tropical cold pool boundaries is shown here. The average updraft velocities in isolated versus intersecting cold pools are similar, denoted by the lines and the boxes, which indicate uh, quartiles. However, the blue arrows and the red arrows denote extreme events. The strongest intersecting cold pools are stronger than the most intense updrafts in isolated cold pools. So the strongest intersecting, stronger than the strongest isolated. Therefore, the most intense convection that is triggered by cold pools typically occurs where two or more gravity currents collide. Finally, some examples of cold pools on radar imagery are shown. Radar reflectivity is shown at a low elevation angle so that we can see echo in the boundary layer close to the radar and low free troposphere were about 75 kilometers from the radar. The figure proceeds in time from A to B to C and then D. At time A, a cold pool is present inside the white dashed circle. The cold pool appears as a clear echo region. The cell with the white arrow pointing to it produces a cold pool which can be seen later in panel B, which is about 30 minutes later. Some of these cold pools expand laterally outward at later times, as seen in panel C, and the cluster of cold pools to the northeast of the radar site eventually appears to merge together, as seen here in panel D. New convective elements can be seen developing along the edges of the cold pools that periodically develop.